Hi there, Ron from RJM Music here. Uh, this week, let's talk about some uh, more in-depth button editing. Um, we're going to work in the Mastermind GT editor today, but again, this one uh, you know, pretty much will apply to the Mastermind editor as well, and I'll try to point out the differences as we come to them. So we're going to start in the Buttons tab of the editor here. We've got uh, it set up for a, a Mastermind GT22. And now if you go over to one of these buttons here, and again, in the GT editor, we're really clicking on these displays and not the actual little uh, button representations. And if we double click on one, it pops up the full button edit screen. And so there's a whole lot of stuff here we can do with our buttons. Um, it's broken up into sections and uh, sort of the, the first place we need to look here is in the general settings. And, and we've got a few settings here. Um, We'll start at the top here. Um, button mode is something we won't really get into today, but if you click at it on this, you'll see that there's a normal and a hold setting. Um, a normal button means that it does something when you press it, and pretty much that's it, um, where a hold button has a, a normal function that happens when you press it, but it also has a secondary function that happens when you hold the button for a couple seconds. Um, we'll talk about those in a later video. The, uh, the probably the most important uh, setting on here is button type and if you click on this menu you'll see there's a whole bunch of different types of buttons um, you can have here this is where you get your bank buttons and preset buttons and a whole bunch of other things here um, you know the, the most important ones being bank preset and IA um, but for now we'll leave it set to be a preset button and um, you know go from there um, Global is a really important setting as well. This one basically says a, a button that's set to global will appear on, on every button page. So, um, for example, if we go back here and uh, the preset buttons are set um, to global. So if we you know, start here on page one and then move to page two and three and four, all these buttons we have here are set up um, you know, as global, and so they automatically show up on every page, and the settings for those buttons are automatically the same on every page. If I were to just take this IA button here and set it to global and hit done, now if I go to page two and three and four, it's still the same. Um, be careful with it because, um, you know, global is an all or nothing thing. If you set it to global, you cannot override it in any way on any other page. So that button will always be the same all the time. So it can only be used in those kind of cases. So going back to this preset button here, we'll double click and um, continue on. Um, flash with tempo here. If we check that button um, and we have a, uh, a tap tempo set up, that button will not only flash with tempo, uh, with the, the current tempo rate, as, uh, as the, the name would suggest, it will also make it a, a tap tempo button and adjust the system tempo so it, it just basically becomes a tap tempo button. You may need to do some additional things to, um, you know, hook it up to actually generate MIDI messages from that tempo, and that we'll discuss later. Okay, so for preset buttons, we have this extra um, parameter here called preset index. And I got into this a bit in, in an earlier video, but we'll, we'll talk about it here a little more. Um, and so what, what, when you have preset buttons, and we go back to the main screen here, we have, we have six buttons currently defined. And um, when you power up your, your mastermind, what it does is it, it takes the preset, but, the preset names and put them in the preset buttons. So, you know, if we go here to presets, you know, we have preset one, two, three, four, five, six, and you know, I can, you know, I can change preset one to something else, and uh, go back here, and now I, I click, and now it, it literally says something else. And so, uh, pre that preset buttons are different in that way, where their their names come exactly from the preset list, and when you press that button, that preset will be loaded. If we were to create more preset buttons, like here, and we uh, Take the shortcut and set it to preset this way. Now something else moves here, and then we have presets two through seven. And so the by default it always does this, where it, it when you load things up, it, it starts at the upper left and scans and looks for the first preset button, and the first preset from the list goes there, 
and then it looks for the next one, and the next preset goes here, et cetera, et cetera. And so, um, you know, that's sort of a, a fixed order. And even if you were to um, do a button swap like we showed, it still wouldn't change things because all that the button settings say is it's just put a preset here and it, it works based on that order from um, left to right, top to bottom. So, but what if we don't want this, uh, this order to be, um, you know, that way and we want to change it? That's what preset index is for. And so what we can do is open up this button and if, if all the preset ind indexes are set to zero, it just goes the way, you know, the default way, left to right, top to bottom. But now we can start messing with that by assigning these. We can set this one to preset index one and then two. And we're just going to go ahead. It's, it's going to do some weird things until we don't have any more that are zero, four, five, six, and this one goes to seven. So now it it went in in that exact order that we said. We it looks instead of now going this way, it basically okay, is there a number one somewhere? I'm going to put my first preset there. Is there a number two somewhere? I'm going to put my preset there and so on and so forth. So you can just by changing the index, it'll change how those, those preset, preset buttons are filled up. Um, a really important note here is that we're not literally saying that preset number one here goes here, preset number two goes here. On a real GT, if we were to click bank up, these, these preset buttons are going to switch and they're going to start in the next bank. So now instead of going from presets one through seven, this one is now going to be eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. And, and you know, the bank buttons will change which presets are, are viewed. So the preset index shows the order that the, the preset buttons are in, but it does not specifically say which preset um, those buttons access. Hope that makes sense. So going back into our editing here, that's preset index. And this general settings section may change based on what um, button type we're looking at. Let's say we want this to be a, a bank down button instead. Now we have a, a minimum and a maximum setting here. And uh, those are important because we, um, well, if we set these to just the same number, doesn't even matter what number, as long as they're the same, um, the bank down button will move down a previous bank and it will do it until it gets down to bank number one, you know, basically starting at preset one. If we only want to limit it to certain banks, you can say um, banks one through three and the, uh, the bank down button will only operate through that range. Um, this makes a lot more sense when using um, songs and set lists and uh, we'll get into that later. Um, and if we change this now to a, a preset, or I'm sorry, not a preset, excuse me, a, a page up button. I could have changed it here, but uh, that's just what I did. Um, we have, um, it makes even more uh, sense uh, using, on, using it in a page button, where now um, this button will move you through the different button pages, but it will be limited to the range of pages one through three. Um, and again, um, just like anything else uh, with that has a min and a max, if you set them both to one, it will go through all the button pages that are available and, and not be limited at all. Another button type that's, uh, that's uh, useful and, and has a, a different setting in this mode is device PC plus. And what this one does is if you're setting up your your uh, mastermind to send spe specific program changes to a device as we did in the previous video um, you can also have a button like this uh, a pc minus or a pc plus that basically just says move this device to the next preset or to the previous preset and it just bumps it up or down um, and so if you have a button like that you have to tell it what device we're talking to and so there's going to be a setting here we only have one device defined in Effect Gizmo, but you could have up to 16 devices. And this one will choose which button um, you're, you're moving up or down one preset. So once we get past this general settings section, the next most 
important ones or the, the ones you probably want to deal with first are these sections here and they they control the appearance of the button um, on a GT22 or on any GT um, you'll see a um, a representation of what the screen would look like on, on the device. Um, on, uh, in the Mastermind Editor for the PVCs and the LTs, they don't have a screen over every button, and so you don't see this um, display here, but you do have the button name and the on color and the off color. And so um, the normal mode settings are what you um, would normally set, and you can call the button anything you like, and it'll, it'll change accordingly. And um, then um, buttons can have an off color and an on color, um, which of course are displayed when the button is off and when the button is on. Um, certain buttons like bank buttons and device PC plus and minus and page buttons are never really on or off. They just have a, uh, they're just a single color and they, they do something, but they don't turn on and off like say maybe a, a, a button that, that selects a preset or a button that turns on a specific effect, those, those make more sense to be you know, on or off, but uh, these ones don't. So if it's a, a button like this that doesn't have a particular um, on or off state, um, the off color is the one that um, controls what color is going to be displayed, and that's just going to be the one that's displayed all the time. So now um, we do have a whole other section here where it says IA mode. And uh, we talked about this a little bit earlier in a previous video where um, a button that isn't the instant access type can have a sort of a whole second set of settings that is an instant access button. So for example, we have a, a device PC plus button here. Um, but if you were to turn on IA mode using the IA mode button, it would change and it wouldn't it would no longer say whatever but instead it would now become ia1 and its appearance would change to look like this and so if we go here um, on a gt it, there's a specific ia mode button by default and that one would on the real unit would switch between the two um, but in the editor there's an ia mode checkbox and it switches between the, um, the normal settings and the IA mode settings. And so this is a totally optional feature. It tends to get used more on the GTs than the LTs or the PVCs, but you can have this where each button page can have sort of two modes where um, you're looking at you know, banks and presets, but then you can switch to a mode where they're all IAs. And so that is why when you get into these buttons, there are two, um, two sets of presets here. And um, you know, regardless of whether you're using IA mode or not, um, the rest of the screen is devoted to IA buttons. And so we have IA settings, a whole set of checkboxes that deal with um, you know, specific features of IA buttons, and then the IA actions. And so these here um, are um, the MIDI messages the button may send, or in the case of a PVC, um, audio features that it may turn on or off. Um, you can do other things like changing button pages or even um, changing the state of other IA buttons. This is the IA buttons are the most uh, powerful ones because they have this this list of of actions they can run, and it can a button can do a whole bunch of different things with a single button press. And that's all we have for this week. Um, please like and subscribe if you like the videos and want to hear when the new ones are coming out. Next week we should be talking about IA button options. Thanks.